For nearly a year, I have been on a mission. And the mission has been to sing 50 songs in 50 weeks in 50 different languages. In my opinion, language is a beautiful currency that shares our identity, our heritage, and our past, and how we choose to bring it to the present and to the future generations. If you've seen our first two episode roundups, where we've covered the first 20 languages we did, ranging from Marathi to Odia to Kannada to Telugu and more, the goal truly has been to connect culture through language and music. There's a lot of languages in the world that are starting to become less and less popular because people aren't passing them down to future generations. People's mother tongues are dying. The few vestiges of culture we have left to celebrate them are our art forms, which is why song, dance, artistic forms become so important to preserve our cultural history. For weeks 20 to 30, a majority of the languages we did were actually quite underrepresented. And there were a few that even I had never heard of, and it was such a beautiful learning experience for me. And for those languages in particular, it was extra important for me to find the right artists and collaborators who had some kind of ancestral roots to that region. So it truly felt like we were paying homage to, to some of these underrecognized regions and cultures. I'll tell you how I ended up finding some of these artists and songs as we take a deep dive. But without further ado, let's show you the songs. Language number 21 is Kokborok. Kokborok is a tibeto burman language spoken by around 814,000 people, primarily in the state of Tripura and extensions to other eastern areas like Bangladesh. And the root of the word kok means language, borok, means people or nation, so it is the language of the Boroks. The language was formerly known as Tripuri, but the name was officially changed in the 20th century. It is a tonal language, which also has the w, like W sound, which you don't see in a lot of other Indian languages. And when I say tonal, for example, if you say the word shutui, that u, depending on whether you say shutui or shutui, you might be saying two very different things. Let me give you a demonstration. Shutui, shutui is the pea. Like and the pea that you eat, Hanivala pea? Oh, oh that's yeah. <laughs> If you change the tone, Shutai. that's haldi, turmeric ah, powder. Shutai is the P. Shutai is the P. And Shutai is the turmeric powder. powder. Ah. <laughs> the song we chose for this was Kisha Kisha Ke. And my collaborator was also the original artist. Her name is Saurabhi Debarma. Saurabhi was actually the first ever female Indian Idol winner beautiful person inside and out and had an amazing time collaborating with her. And let's take a moment to talk about the attire. Both of us were wearing the Risha and the Rignai Jamathibar. There's also the Rutugu, which is very popular to that region. But just take a look, right? Some of the jewelry we were wearing was all made from silver coins, which was incredibly beautiful and gorgeous. And most of these pieces are fully handmade and, and really, really rare to source and find these days. I felt really regal and beautiful in the attire. Actually ended up doing a later collaboration with a friend of mine, Ishita Mangal, where we did more of a deep dive into the attire from the region. And as somebody who is not necessarily into fashion, but it's been a really cool exploration through this series to understand why certain colors, textiles, fabrics mean so much to a region. It's, it's been an amazing learning experience. It's been incredible. Without further ado, here's the song. Language number 22 is Irula. Irula is a Dravidian language spoken by the Irulas or the Irula tribe, and most of the inhabitants are in the Nilgiri Mountains from the states of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and parts of Karnataka. The language itself is closely related to Tamil and Malayalam. It actually sounds a little bit more like Malayalam, but the script is closer to Tamar, so it feels like this beautiful blend between the two languages. And it is spoken by a grand total of 11,000 people. It's 
dying as a language and unfortunately a lot of folks who are part of the Irula tribe have been discriminated against greatly because of caste, creed and other reasons and we wanted to try to honor this as, as best as we could, recognizing also the discrimination that has happened in the region. I was not able to find an artist who had Irula roots, however I collaborated with one Tamar artist and one Malayalam artist to kind of try to represent aspects of the region. My collaborators were Swati Mukund and Sana Moidati incredible woman. The song we chose was Kalakata Sandana Mero, which is from the Malayalam movie Ayapanam Kushiam. And the singer Nandiyamma actually won the award for best female playback singer that year for her song in the movie. This was a particularly difficult song to sing because you know, like for example, literally the song before this, which was in Kokporok, it was Kisha Kisha Keloyan Kam. It was a lot of airiness, melodic focus, whereas this was a much throatier, raw language. So, it's just like from a very different part of your throat. It was very exciting to explore. And without further ado, here's the song. Kalakada sandana mero veg vega putirko Uparika pogila movi mena de pakila mo Language number 23 is Marwadi. Marwadi is an Indo-Aryan language spoken by over 21 million people, primarily originating from the state of Rajasthan. And the song we chose was Chaudhri by Mame Khan, which you may have heard the quite a famous folk song. My collaborator was Samarth Swaroop, who I've known for a few years, so it was really, really fun finally collaborating on something that also connected with his identity. The song itself, the portion we chose, and just in general, our conversation, so much of it was about food, like dal bati, churma, um, and all of these Rajasthani foods, because from my understanding, the culture is very much grounded in, you know, guests are like God and we feed them, basically. The outfit for this was gorgeous very uh, involved. I almost felt like I was a bride and funny enough, Samat's wife was at the shoot and she helped dress me up and wear the nose ring properly. They'd actually just gotten married a few weeks prior so probably you know she was in the flow and she knew exactly what to do. Yeah, here's the Marwadi song. <laughs> Language number 24 is Ahirani or Kandeshi. It's an Indo-Aryan language spoken mostly in the region of Maharashtra and parts of Gujarat with about 2 million native speakers. The language has both names, Ahirani and Kandeshi, um, and they're interchangeably used. Ahirani is more of representing the caste or the Ahirs, which used to be more of a cattle herding tribe. And Kandeshi now is adopted by folks because it more represents the region, which is the Kandesh region. The song we chose was Dekhtuni Baiko, which means look at your wife. To be very honest, the song was a little bit sexist because it's a mother-in-law singing about her wife, uh, her son's wife on their wedding and day and how she's like putting all this makeup but she still looks ugly. And of course it's meant to be tongue-in-cheek and funny. Sometimes when songs become popular, even though it's meant to be tongue-in-cheek, some people take it literally. So it's 
just reinforcing certain patriarchal stereotypes, which my collaborator and I absolutely did not want to do. My collaborator was none other than Rani Kohinoor or Sushant Devgikar, who is the OG drag queen in India and just an incredible, incredible human. We've met many a time, been on several panels together. It's just always so much fun. So our interpretation of it was a little bit more tongue in cheek, just saying, you know, you Baiko are a queen and deserve to be expressing yourself in whatever way you want. Hopefully you enjoy it and here's our version of it. The 25th language we did was Sanskrit. Sanskrit is an Indo-Aryan language. It's one of the oldest languages in the world. The oldest is actually Tamar. Interestingly enough, only 25,000 people currently consider it to be their mother tongue because through history, it's mostly been relegated to a written language that shows up often in Vedic texts or religious texts. The song we chose was Ayagiri Nandini, which is a tribute to the goddess Durga, who's known for her fierceness, bravery, and just divine femininity. And my collaborator was none other than Mohini Day, who is, in my opinion, one of the most prolific bassists, like bass guitar players, to exist ever, or at least currently living, let alone from India. She's amazing. Please check her out if you haven't. And yeah, we came together to do a version of this, this shloka, I guess, um, this Sanskrit shloka which we did in three different speeds, so slow, medium, and fast. So we were also able to show off her, her bass skills. The track was produced by her husband, Mark Hartsuch, who is also such a kind person. Um, and yeah, we had, we had such a blast. Mohani and I met for the first time, I wanna say now, two years ago. Again, we were speaking on a panel and just hit it off and it was such a joy. And have a listen for yourself. <laughs> Language number 26 is Kachi. Kachi is spoken by 11 million people. It's an Indo-Aryan language, actually from the Kach region of India and the Sindh region of Pakistan. Interestingly, even though they're different languages, Kachi has a lot of similar vocabulary and grammar to Sindhi. So perhaps a lot of the folks can understand each other. And a lot of the Kachi region that exists in present-day India is basically the region of Gujarat and parts of Western India. The collaborator for this was Jesus Mehta, who's an incredible rapper and producer. So yeah, we actually ended up doing a rap verse for this song. The song we chose was Kachado Yad Kariya by Diwali Ahir. He traveled from Suda to come to Mumbai for us to make this happen and it was it was so much fun. I remember texting my team being like, I'm collaborating with Jesus. And a couple of our team members are Christian, so they were like, uh, are you okay? But yeah, it was, it was really fun. <laughs> Kachadoya, the Kariya, Mujibale, Jiva, Tuniria, Kachadoya, the Kariya, Mujibale, Jiva, Tuniria, Pai, 
Language number 27 is Urdu. Urdu is an Indo-Aryan language which is the national language of Pakistan, also spoken in many parts of India. And it has about 230 million speakers and is about the 10th most spoken language worldwide. The song we did for this was Mujh Se Pehli Si Mohabbat by Fez Ahmed Fez, really prolific poet. And, and Urdu in general as a language is just so poetic. Every word holds such deep meaning, it's it's stunning. And to be honest, I feel like this song, um, when we released it on short form platforms like Instagram and YouTube Shorts, didn't get the, the due it deserved. So definitely please go check it out. My collaborators were incredible. It was Adia Mishra, who, amazing singer, her vocal tone is just everything. And she just was on last year's Indian Idol. I believe she was in the top 10. And then my other collaborator was Anshuman Sharma, who's an amazing producer. So he played keys for this and yeah, we had a beautiful, beautiful time doing it. <laughs> Number 28 was our first global language of the series, and it was Patois, which is Patois is a form of Creole. Creole is a mixture of languages, basically. Um, this was an English based Creole, so it was English and African sounds together, and Patois is very popular in Jamaica or spoken by a lot of the Jamaican diaspora in the US, UK, Canada, and many other parts of the world. I believe it's spoken by about 3.2 million people globally. And the song we chose for this was Bam Bam by Sister Nancy, and my collaborator was an artist named Ayana. Ayana is based in London. Back in April, I was in London for a week for a work trip, and so tried to collaborate with a couple of global artists, and Ayana was one of them. I found her on Instagram, we started chatting, she really liked the concept, and that's kind of how it ended up happening. It was actually one of the harder languages for me because it's so close to English that I really didn't want to mess it up because of the sounds. Um, and Ayana also tried teaching me some Patois, which I can show you some snippets of. If there's like a really good meal or like if we have something's arrived and it's like really yummy, I'll show it to her mom and I'll say Gudas! Gudas! <laughs> what does that mean? Gudas just means like this looks great. Oh, Interestingly, the attire for this, you know, I, I asked her opinion whether we should wear something traditional and in some cultures it's seen as really honoring the culture when you wear their traditional attire. For example, in a later roundup that I'll do, we ended up doing Mandarin at some point and I was wearing my collaborator's mom's wedding dress. It was seen as appropriate, you know, for for the culture and region, but for Patwa and just Jamaican culture in general, Ayana felt like it would not be as appropriate for me to wear something. So instead, we decided to do something that was more of a homage. So a lot of a lot of Jamaican and just in general Caribbean and island attire is is very weave based. So I wore a crochet dress, she wore something. She wore clips and I wore a flower crown that were paying homage to the colors of Jamaica. So yeah, had a great time 
and here's the song. I miss the one thing Nancy can understand. One thing Nancy can understand. What make them a talk about me ambition? I say what make them a talk about me ambition? Can me say some of them a ask me where me get it from? Cause some of them a ask me where me get it from. Well, I true them don't know, know it's from creation. I true them don't know it's from creation. Bam bam. Hey, what a bam bam. Bam bam de la bam bam. Bam bam de la bam bam. Hey, what a bam bam. Say what, what a bam bam. This woman never trouble no one. I'm a lady, I'm not a man. MC is my ambition. I come for nice of Jamaica. Bam bam. Language number 29 was Persian or Farsi, which is spoken by about 130 million people, mostly in Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, parts of India, and this huge diaspora globally. The language has so many similarities to Hindi and Urdu. I actually made a video pointing them out, which I can share a little bit of here. Hindi and Persian have a lot of common words. What is life? Life is Zendegi. What is, again, Dobar. Dobar. But even Words like, in the song we did, sabz, sabz is like sabzi, which means greens. And I was trying to make sure that I got all the pronunciations fine, like buland. The song we chose was Lily in the Moon by Ada Shagasmi. And my collaborator was Sabah. Sabah is originally Iranian, but she lives in Vienna. So the same trip that I was in London, again, I found her on the internet, we'd been talking, she loved the concept. So we were trying to figure out how to see each other and I took a day trip to Vienna, went in the morning, came back in the evening. My round trip flight ticket was $30. Traveling within Europe is clearly fairly affordable. What was also really interesting about singing in Farsi, singing in Persian was a lot of the vocal intonations. So, you know, for example, if you sing in Hindustani classical or Carnatic, you're used to exploring notes where you go and then of course Carnatic is way more circular than that. But in Farsi, a lot of it was, you know, more like microtonal, minor-esque inflection. So for example, there was a line which was Right? The way that that kind of was explored like that kind of exploration is just very different from other styles I'm used to so it was really fun you can hear it in the song got to wear like a fusion Persian attire and, and it was really cool just to see how closely related the languages are and what that means for you know the roots of where we are and exist in the world because I think so many of us I think the world today is unfortunately becoming very very closed off very verticalized everybody is going back to their comfort zone and their roots, which is a beautiful thing, but it also means that we're becoming less tolerant. And I think there's so much beauty in diversity and unity in that and being able to celebrate each other's differences as much as similarities. And honestly, if we examine languages, there's so many roots that are so similar among languages, it's crazy. You know, so rather than creating divide, the more we can come together, in my opinion, is, is beautiful. <laughs>
And language number 30 is Santali. Santali is an Austroasiatic language, which means that's kind of where the roots are from. It's actually the third most spoken Austroasiatic language after Vietnamese and Khmer, so they might actually have a lot of similarities. It's spoken by about 7.6 million people in India, Bhutan, Nepal, and a lot of eastern states of India. The song we chose was Tahare, and my collaborator was Shreya Vasu, very, very sweet individual. And the sari again had a very particular way of being worn. So I shot this in Delhi with Shreya and my Masi, my mom's older sister, lives in Delhi. So she very kindly helped me. We found a YouTube video, tied the sari and attempted to honor. You would think that by the end of this project, I have learned how to tie a sari and the unfortunate reality is no, because each region has such different ways of tying them that I don't want to mess it up. So I usually request for help. But my goal by the end of 2024 is to learn how to tie a sari and do it well. So keep me accountable to that goal, please. <laughs> Yeah, preparing for each of these languages has been really interesting. So typically, I will reach out to a collaborator. Once I've confirmed the collaborator and we've confirmed where we are in the world logistically and how we can meet each other, um, then I figure out the song. Either I will request the collaborator to send me some suggestions or I will do my research, send a few suggestions, and then we go back and forth. Then I will create a one minute arrangement of that song. Um, figure out translations so I can understand, okay, what am I singing? What does it sound like, et cetera, et cetera. Practice a little bit on my own, create a track for it. I have an incredible team who's really been helping me execute this, um, who I will definitely mention and honor. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, to pull something like this off is, is definitely not a one person army, let alone the incredible collaborators and everybody else. Um, my friend and guitarist and producer Timothy has been producing most of these tracks. My team member Ria has been coordinating with all of the fashion labels and small businesses that we've been trying to source a lot of these clothing from to be able to honor each culture. So, so it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. And then not to mention having to figure out where people are, how to get to them, how we do all of that, all of the studios that have helped us, all of, you know, yeah, so thank you. But yeah, basically the prep process is very intensive. And if you want to know more about that, let me know in the comments so that in the next roundup, I can tell you what the prep process looks like. I feel like I've stretched my brain a lot in the last year because every week I've been doing at least one, right? Sometimes if I have other projects I'm traveling for, then sometimes in a week I do two or three so that I can prep and have them ready. My brain has been definitely stretched in many different directions, but it's been, it's been really fun. It's been beautiful, a lot of learning. Yeah, I'm truly, truly grateful to people for, for agreeing to be a part of this project and for y'all for engaging with it, enjoying it and, and hopefully learning something from it because I, I know I've learned so much and to me that was really the goal um, to learn more about culture and language through song and to be able to sing in many different languages. Yeah, eventually eventually tour, do a show with it. We'll, we'll figure out what that looks like. But anyway, let me know what your favorite song has been from these last 20 to 30 or any of the first 20 before. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.